Hello everyone. Hello, hello. Uh-oh. My umbrella is trying to blow away. It's a good thing I have it strapped down. Alright, so how's everybody doing today? Hopefully I have a few people that decide to hang out uh, for another round of Knotted Lace Adventures. Um, I am talking to Elena this week. I have a chat set up for Wednesday night, my time, Thursday morning, her time, because of course she's in Australia. So, you know, slightly different time there. And, um, and I've been practicing, so I do have some lace to show you. Uh, I don't know, I just, I just like feel like making the Mediterranean knotted lace, so that's what I'm doing right now. I wore like a necklace and earrings today, kind of random. Um, feeling a little perkier, even though I'm so tired and I hurt so bad. I got a ton of stuff done, but oh, so tired from yesterday. Um, but I wanted to talk about Mediterranean knotted lace and show you what I've been practicing. And um, <laughs> yeah, my allergies have been so bad too, Tamara. <gasps> oh. Oh yes, the allergies, the allergies are bad. But um, I have kind of been on a mission to practice my knotted lace and clean off my tatting shuttles. So I've been using the thread that I have wound on my tatting shuttles that's left over from projects or I aborted the project. <laughs> and I've been using that thread to make my lace projects. And so this is one of my little freehand. I just kind of made it without a pattern. So this is one of my little projects that I was working on. So I'll show you that up close in a little bit. Um, but even though I read my books, sometimes I don't always remember things quite right. I used to have a much better memory. Not so much anymore. And um, I threw this on and I was going to do, like keep going with it and make it a bigger motif, only this is an edging. Um, so it's hard to climb out of this and do other things. So this just became my edging <laughs> because then I had to stop making my little motif because I didn't remember that that was an edge, not a like a piece that I could keep using to climb out. So yeah, whoops, <laughs> things like that happen. So anyway, um, I, I've just been using my shuttles, and this is a little, this is a shuttle that I decorated a few years ago. I need to do more of that, it's really fun to, to decorate my shuttles. But anyway, I started off with a length about, you know, like a yard, maybe a little less. And then I got a little braver and I did like a little more than a yard. Now I've been, I've been even more brave. So I've been rolling out like a yard and a half-ish long okay so clearly I I'm improving with my practice um, so there's my my shuttle with my extra thread it is kind of nice though that I mean the shuttles are great for storing your thread for the Mediterranean knotted lace um, without having to bring the whole ball so that's kind of been nice like I traveled and I had enough thread to do um, this project and then I had like two more tatting projects that were in my bag as well. But I pretty much just practiced my my knotted lace because, you know, that's kind of what I was wanting to practice. Now, I did work on socks Saturday morning because I was in the mood for the socks. Uh, and I'm into the heel turn on the first sock, but um, they aren't super exciting because they're just my plain, plain socks. And now I'm trying to get this uh, threaded. So I really like my um, Sasha Co needles, my tulip ones that I bought. They work very well for this Mediterranean knotted lace. I am still having some issues with my Lisbeth thread because that's most of what I had on my shuttles to clean off. I am still having some issues with my thread twisting. So I find that every so often I have to dangle my needle and let it untwist, which I honestly I have to do that with my tatting as well. Um, I don't know if it's just how I tat and how I'm like knotted lacing or what, but I, I don't appreciate that on the Lisbeth thread, I have to say. The Olympus I had much fewer issues with um, in terms of, you know, twisting. So anyway, um, 
I've just been carrying around my little tube here of my sashiko needles and that way if I break one or need another one I have it but this is part of what I really love about the knotted lace is pretty much I need a length of thread and the motif that I have been working on and and that's kind of it um, so I'm going to talk a little bit and then we'll turn the camera down um, I haven't pulled a winner I have to talk to Tina and and see if she pulled a winner for last month um, but we are already into May which is month five and I didn't grab my sheet so I don't even remember what the year of self-care is for this month but um, I need to look that up and uh, keep participating because again I don't remember what I what I'm doing in this month um, I don't remember what I made it so I really need to go look and see because it's a brand new month of self-care um, it's a brand new month so I can't even use last month's and talk about that um, my tatting shuttles haven't arrived yet I ordered amber tatting shuttles for last month because it was you know make or buy a, a tool a special tool um, but I am looking forward to receiving them so I'm hoping that they come soon but they are coming from Russia maybe I don't know it's like quite a ways away so might be a little bit until I get them um, and I did a little bit of sewing I made um, a shirt for Ina so don't forget that this week we're doing knotted lace and then I did finish plying that Golden Girls um, roving uh, single so now I have a two ply uh, on my wheel ready to pull off so uh, we will have a new roving something different for Wednesday and I'll talk about my method or madness or process or whatever for how I decide what I'm going to do with a roving and um, oh Tamara hey thanks Tamara she's like here May is spa day little indulgences oh man I could so use a spa day I'll tell you what um, yeah I missed my I get a monthly massage because of my back and my poor masseuse ended up with COVID last month so I didn't get my massage and I haven't called back to try to reschedule, but maybe I should do that and try to get in this week and see if I can uh, and get a massage because I'll tell you what, oof, oof, my back hurts. I did a lot of stuff yesterday um, and I don't have coffee today. I actually have chai. My husband made chai. He's from India, made me proper chai, um, but I like mine with ginger. Sometimes in the summer he doesn't make it with ginger, but I asked for ginger. So ginger and cardamom and tea leaves and um, and it's finally to a drinkable temperature. He likes his scalding hot. I can't handle that. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Now I do prefer it with my Dane Tree black leaves instead of the Tetley that he buys, but that's all right. Uh, he made it for me, so I am not going to scoff at that. So anyway. Um, Tina missed her Friday um, video and forgot to tell me to move it, but she ended up doing one Saturday. And she will be back on Friday, of course, to talk again about all the things we have going on. We're all, we are like really creeping up on slow crawl. Uh, so I have a whole bunch of slow crawl stuff I have to get done this week. And I've been planting stuff in my garden. So um, I can put a bunch of cauliflower out. I lost a few in the frost, so I, I replaced those. Um, and I have celery that I need to put out and tomatoes. The tomatoes are definitely ready to go out in the garden. And, um, yeah, you know, it's just, it's like, there's never enough time in May and June to get all the things done that you need and want to get done. So anyway, um, you have yummy teas. Yeah, I love, I love tea. I do. Um, I, I can really only drink like light roast coffee. Um, but I've developed a taste for black, white, some green and herbal. I like herbal teas. Um, so I have less tea than I used to have in my stash, but I still have still have a little bit of a stash of tea. Um, sort of like I have a stash. Of, I was bad. I ordered more fabric. It wasn't bad, right? Just adding to my stash. Um, but we needed more fabric so that I could talk about it in two weeks, right? We're gonna go with that. Um, make such cute things it's so hard not to buy the yarn or buy the roving or buy the thread it's like oh but I could make so many things and it's it's hopeful and it's uplifting and I have a hard time resisting 
So um, hopefully you do too, because that's how we stay in business. Um, anyway, so yeah, there's just all kinds of things going on. Um, if you haven't heard about Slow Crawl yet, go check out slowcrawl.com. We are participating. We're a bonus shop. There's only two shops in the bonus region. You do have to make a purchase from the bonus shops. Um, but if you make a purchase from both shops, you are automatically entered for the prize drawing from those two shops. So that's really, you know, it's not a, you know, terrible thing. But you have to make sure you have a passport. You'll have to submit that online to me at slowcrawl.com. And um, you do get free patterns from all of the shops with your passport. So if you go visit the in-person shops, then you get free patterns when you visit. And if you buy something from any of the shops on the crawl and you tell them that you're a crawler, Yep, you get patterns there too. So I have been hard at work making sure all the patterns look good. I need to get those sent out for um, revisions though. Toot sweet, very, very fast. Anyway, all right, so let's get into what we're doing today, which is of course Mediterranean knotted lace. Uh, next week, of course, we're doing embroidery. The week after that, you're gonna be downstairs with me uh, sewing, we're gonna sew something. I don't know what yet, I'll figure it out before then, but uh, in two weeks we're going to be downstairs sewing. Um, so I've been practicing from this book of Mediterranean Knotted Lace and um, let me see, I've been making, I have to find which sampler I've been working on uh, because at first I was just like practicing, 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 practicing and then I decided oh boy you know I better actually make one of these um, and try to you know follow a pattern. Um, so I'm following a pattern and I am making this one, this one. So this is what I'm working on and um, you guys are going to join me as I work on the next round. Um, repeat five steps five and six three times. So I don't know if I've done that yet. Oh, yep, I did. So what are we going into? Bridge into the basic loop and work three long picots. Bridge into the large loop and work 11 small picots. So I am ready to do this like last round. So we're going to do a round of um, basic loops and large loops and we'll talk about that. And then I will be ready for my finishing loop, finishing round. So it'll be just a tiny little, tiny little thing. So um, I am, I will try and find you guys a little um, pattern to share. Let me turn this around and get it set up um, for the knotted lace. And oh, there you get a lovely view of my off my back deck. Um, okay, see if I can get in here now and get all set up. So, do to do. Sorry about this. There we go. there. Drop that down. I always like to give you guys as good a view as I can. So this was my little, I don't know, practice sampler piece that I was working on. And this one starts from the center out and it uses small basic loops and it builds with the basic loops out. And then I kind of did large loops and then I did some little picos and then I put the tiny Picos around that outer edge and I was just playing with this just just learning as I go uh, I know that I'm not pulling my knots tight enough so I do need to work on that um, I, I've rediscovered that as I have been working on this one so this is the pattern that I am trying to make and that's out of the book and which page is that out of the book that I'm working with so I think it's this one. So this is the the book and here's what I'm trying to make is this one right here. So I'm close. I'm I'm ready to do this uh, second to last round. So I have to do one more round and then the last one where I put all the tiny little picos on and then three big lo pico loops. So this is where I'm at trying to make and it doesn't look terrible. It looks kind of similar. Um, you know I I'm getting better as I go along. I just keep telling myself I'm getting better. Um, but this one used daisy loops, whereas this one over here just started with um, 
sort of a regular center with the small basic loops. And um, the way that they they work is um, the way Elena has it is she has um, a diagram with the written instructions and then you follow along and then you keep following along as you go and she tells you what each of these things mean. So like this one's a bridging loop and then this one's a basic loop and this one's a, um, a large loop and, and anyway, so she tells you what all of these things are so that you can keep working. And then I did not um, do my first knot of the round because I wanted to show you how you put in your new thread so um, I've worked to the end of my round just, and I just managed to squeak this one out with my last little bit of thread. And this is just a basic loop. So the way that Elena talks about it is you always want to make sure that you are putting a new thread in with a basic loop. You don't want to be doing that on a long loop or with a bunch of picos because then you can see it easier. So um, basically what I'm going to do is work a second knot next to the very last knot that I made, and then I will end up holding these um, threads together, both the tail thread and the new thread, and working it into the next one. So um, if you recall, you want to make sure that your needle is behind the, last, the thread that you are placing it under, and then under your tail, and then you'll grab the threads from the back of your needle and you wrap them up hang on like this so what's that counterclockwise I believe and then you're going to pull through and it makes a figure eight style loop which is a little hard to see because I do have this tail sticking out in here here's my figure eight style loop this is the knot that we are setting down in here. And then this needs to be tight. And that's what I've been struggling with is I haven't been making my knots as tight as I should. So I do need to work on, on my knots. I need to make them tighter. And then we're going to hold these two together and work the next knot because I'm just making a, a basic loop. And we're going to pull it down into place. And when you pull it down into place, you just need to make sure that it is um, the size that you want and the shape that you want. And then this thread gets caught on the next round. So now, I don't know if you guys can even see this. So now these two threads right here will be caught on the next round. So don't have to worry about it too much because those two threads right there are going to be caught on the next round. Okay, so I've worked my basic loop and I don't really want to carry my tail along. Sometimes I carry it along two loops, sometimes I don't. But I do need a, a pretty long loop here because I need to fit 11 of these little pico bumps on this thread. And that's how you build these is you make just a plain loop, but then you build with a bunch of little itty bitty loops they call pico loops on top of that. And that's how you get sort of that chain appearance like on tatting. Um, but you go in under your thread here, you make sure that the tail, wherever your tail is, is laying on top. Bring your yarn up, and I always try to grab it so that I've got the tail and the body of my thread in here and pull it through. And then this is what's a little bit hard because you have to make it big enough to support your 11 loops and clearly bigger than your last loop so that it lays flatter. But you don't want it to be too big. And then I have to try to match this loop all the way around. So, oop, and I think I put it in the wrong loop. Yes, I did. And now comes the fun part of deciding if I can pick it out or if I can live with it. But I think I'm going to pick it out. And that's also, that's one of the things like, okay, so my knots aren't tight enough. 
But it does mean that if I need to, I can pick it out instead of having to cut it out. So, I don't know, it's probably not a good thing. I should have gone in this loop. I made this one too small. This is another basic loop right here, but it's much too small. That one should have been a lot larger. So, now we're gonna repeat this process. So, lay the tail thread over, bring these up from the back. Make sure that it's not too big and not too small. That looks okay. There we go. That looks better. Give it a little extra yank. Because clearly I'm not getting them tight enough. Although it worked in my favor that time. And then I'm just making a basic mm -hmm. loop, which is the smaller one right here. Like this. And then I'm going to turn it and, okay, be very careful in choosing my thread again. Anyway, so you're going to keep doing these little loops, uh, what they call the basic loop, what she calls the basic loop and the large loop all the way around. And trying to make them approximately the same size. And then all these little itty bitty picos get built on this long thread right here. So, I don't know if you could use a gauge to keep the loops the same size. I, I just keep trying to eyeball it and get a little bit better as I go. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, I assume that with more practice I will just get better at, at eyeballing where I need to be. Um, but this is kind of how I've been working and just trying to sort of balance things out. And again, the hard part for me is getting these, these Pico knots uh, tight because you can see uh, these aren't tight so they slip a little bit. I can move them. You're not really supposed to be able to do that. Uh, so like it kind of worked in my favor and yet it kind of didn't work in my favor. So I just have to, I just have to keep practicing. Um, and it had been years, I mean literally years since I had done any knotted lace whatsoever. So I was kind of like reteaching myself from what I already knew and see this one was a little bit smaller than what it should have been right here to match these two. Oh well, just gonna go with it now. This is all practice. The more that you do, the better you'll get. So I, I've been trying not to be too hard on myself and just keep saying it's practice, it's practice, I'm getting better and, and not worry about it too much. And like if I pull my thread to one side or the other, you can open or close your loop. So you have to be a little bit careful of that as well. Once you have the size set for how big you want it, uh, you have to be a little bit careful and make sure that you are setting it properly. So big loop, basic loop, big loop, just kind of pull that tight, a little basic loop again. I find this fun, um, a lot more fun than I remembered, not that I didn't like it because I liked it when I was making it. Just, um, you know, you get busy and you're doing other things and, oh, I didn't manage. This happens to me occasionally too. I didn't manage to actually get the uh, tail loop around it before I uh, pulled it through. There we go. There's that one. Now we're getting back around to where we had joined, so this is good because I can show you how to join into that one. So this is the basic loop next to it. And I've got a little mess here because I've got my tail coming through. And this is always the hard part, is these tails. You do want to catch the tail if you can. Um, there's the tail. But that's not gonna work for me. Or 
Where's the tail? There it is. There. Okay, I think I've got it. So I tried to catch my tail from when I put my new thread in here. And then this one is my double thread with my other tail in it. So this time when I work that basic loop in there, I've made sure that I've caught both of those threads here. And that's not a beautiful basic loop, but it's gonna work. It's gonna work. And now I am back around to the beginning again where I start with my basic loop here. So I'm gonna put the basic loop in. then we are going to cut those tails off because now we've locked them both down. And this was part of what I had difficulty with because you just cut them off. Like you don't have to put your tails in and then cut them off like I do with, well, almost all of my other uh, arts. And I could have clipped that one a little bit shorter. But now my tails aren't going to get in my way and I can just Keep moving forward. So what I will do is I will start doing lots and lots of tiny little pico, pico knots. Um, so you pull these small, so I always kind of pull this loop out a little bit. There's one tiny little pico knot. And I'm just going to space them across here and I have to have 11 of them. So 12 total knots will be in this bar. That always helps me too, remembering that much. Just like this. There it is. Boop, boop. Do another one. So there will be 11 itty bitty little pico knots across each of these big loops that I put on here. And when I come to uh, this basic loop, I'm going to put three longer picos on this loop as well. So, hi Angelus. And here I'm getting in trouble because I have my tail, so I clearly need to move that out a little more. There we go. And I'm just going to like pull on my thread a little bit and shorten the tail. But I have to kind of keep it long while I'm working so that I don't have to do that uh, putting in of the threads thing as often. So let's see how many knots I have. So this was my basic loop knot. So one, two, three, four, five. So I gotta fit six more on here. Whoops, and see there, my knot moved not really supposed to move. Uh, goodness. Yeah. Six. And that one's probably just a smidgen too long, so seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Oh, well, that was an interesting bird call. And 11. And clearly I didn't space these out quite as much as I should have, and they slide more than they should, so I'm still working on that part. There's 11. Yay! So there's 11 little pico knots, and that's how you build these, is they start off as bare thread, and then you build them out with all these tiny little pico knots. Isn't that crazy? I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy. It's cool, but crazy.
So, anyhow. Alrighty. Now, over here, I'm going to do sort of a basic loop into this one. But then I also need to put three longer picos. Oops, got a little bit of a knot on my tail. There. And this is the point at which, like, I'm starting to get some buildup in my thread. So usually I end up uh, hanging my needle. And when you make the picos, the cool thing is it's the same stitch. Because uh, we were making tiny picos, but now we want to make longer loops, right? So it's the same stitch, and you just sort of hold it up so that it makes a longer loop than what you were making. That looks like a good size little pico. So now the key is I have to try to match this two more times and then in between each set as I go around that's where things get a little bit hinky is in trying to match that looks okay trying to match the length of these there it's not terrible those kind of match right Put one more in. Mm. All right. Hey, those like they're almost the same size. That's very exciting. I have issues with this. Um, there. So there we go. This is this is now the pattern that I will be repeating around the outside edge of this and then hoping to block it mostly flat. So um, I you build on these long loops with all these tiny little knots and then you put some cute little picos in and it mostly kind of sort of looks like the pattern that I was going for. So there's the pattern picture. Here's here's my work next to it. So I'm on this outer round here. It doesn't look terrible. It it has some issues, but it doesn't look terrible, which is very exciting for me. Um, because I this is the first I've tried to follow a pattern since I got back into knotted lace. So anyway, it doesn't look terrible. I, I'm sort of pleased with it, mostly pleased with it. Hope you guys have been able to see what I was doing. It looks a little dark on my screen, and I apologize for that. Um, yeah, that's what I've been working on, Mediterranean Knotted Lace. So, okay, I'm going to flip this back around now and chit-chat. Oh, yeah, there's my door. Let's not do that. So there we go! A little bit of Mediterranean Knotted Lace for your day. And some tips for, like, what not to do, because I'm full of those. Anyway, um, I'm excited to talk to Elena this week about lots of things, but also um, show her, is that a frog? Must be a frog. Show her what I've been working on um, with my knotted lace because I am committed to practicing um, at least a little bit and, and trying to relearn, <laughs> relearn how to do this. Um, I actually like it so much. I'm enjoying it so much. I am half tempted to try to make something for the IOLI contest with Mediterranean knotted lace. I could maybe do that, right? I don't know. I mean, knitting is my thing, and tatting I quite enjoy, both of which I teach. But the knotted lace is kind of fun. Maybe I should, I don't know. I don't know yet, I haven't fully decided. I suppose I could always tat something and Mediterranean knotted lace something. Um, I'm not limited to just one entry, I don't think. So maybe I should look that up. Uh, I did share the link to our Facebook page if you didn't catch it. Um, I put that up sometime last week, so you can check that out if you're interested. Uh, the International Organization of Lace is super cool. Um, they are becoming more open to different types of lace, not just bobbin lace. 
and um, you see more knitting and tatting and other stuff being shared, which I think is really awesome because if you are the organization of lace, I think it's important that you are not just about bobbin lace. I mean, bobbin lace is all fine and good, but you know, there's other laces out there too. Let's embrace all of them. Uh, kind of, that's kind of what we feel like at Black Sheep Fiber Emporium. That's why we have knitting and tatting and spinning and weaving and embroidery and sashiko and I don't even know. We have so much stuff, right? Um, because we like all of these needle arts and we want to share our, our obsessions with you uh, and help you as well in your obsessions. So, oh, my chai is quite cold now. It's kind of nice. It's a very warm day today. It's a very warm day. And I'm, like I said, I'm very tired. I'm very sore. Um, I got a lot done yesterday, but I'm very tired and very sore. And Ina, f Ina fell today and she hit her face on the two little steps we have in the garage. And so she's kind of developing a little bit of a black eye. I'm like, I feel so bad about it. I felt so bad about it. Um, but it was either let her fall, um, or let her get her fingers squished in the door. And I decided that having your fingers squished in the door jam between the door edge and the hinge edge was probably worse than letting her fall. So I held the door open and then grabbed the child. Um, and it was not pretty. She was not happy. She's, she, had a, she was having a great day until then and she was not having a good day. So anyway. She was a little late going down for a nap, which is why I was a couple of minutes late getting on here to demonstrate for you all. But anyway, um, thank you, Tamara, for grabbing the May uh, theme for me. So it's spa day and little indulgences. It's little things, little things to uh, make you happy. So, you know, a little, little ball of new thread and maybe a, maybe a new Mediterranean knotted lace obsession. Okay, you don't have to, but just in case. Um, you know, or a sashiko kit, uh, could be really fun, or some, some of that lovely, oh, that Olympus, that's nice stuff, you get some new Olympus, that would be great. So, anyway, I am feeling so sleepy, I think I'm gonna go in and, uh, maybe take a 20 minute nap while she's still napping, and then get back to doing all the things that I have to get done. So, until next time, remember, Wednesday we are back with spinning, and I have roving we'll pick it maybe we'll pick a new roving and I'll talk to you about um, why I pick and how I pick and, and what my pick determines for spinning and then uh, next Monday we're doing embroidery the following Monday we are doing sewing um, down in my sewing area we'll probably be doing a, some type of garment with knit fabric um, so I don't know that we'll get the whole thing done but I'm at least going to talk to you about what I do and patterns and whatever all because uh, that's fun. So we'll do that as well. And then, um, let's see, following, then we, let's see, I have weaving. Still not done with that weaving, man. I gotta get that thing off my loom so we can put something new on. And I kind of, I don't know, I want to do something maybe with a hand spun weft, maybe? Could be fun. I don't know. I'm, that's kind of where I'm leaning, is a hand spun weft. Because I have enough hand spun that I think I could. So, I don't know yet, that's, uh, that's kind of what I'm, kind of what I'm feeling though. Um, and don't forget, you know, Tina's on on Fridays and she does her chat as well. Um, I am trying to get some more videos up on TikTok um, and Instagram, more little teaching videos. And um, probably after we do sewing, I think that we'll do another tatting maybe on a Monday. Um, I do have classes scheduled if you are looking for a class. I have... Um, Intermediate Lace, Intermediate Knitted Lace, which is scheduled to run this weekend next, and I have no students right now, so if you signed up, you would be my only student. Um, and then next month, I have Beginner's Tatting, beginner Shuttle Tatting, and I really need to set up um, a Zoom call night for all of my tatters so that um, we can just get together and chit-chat and tat. So anyway, that's the plan. Now you know, and until... Wednesday, do please take care of yourself. Wear your mask, wash your hands, uh, physically distance, take care of yourself physically, emotionally, mentally, and craftually, as I like to say. 
Uh, don't forget to shop at blacksheepfiberemporium.com. Make sure, that, make sure that you are entering our year of self-care. I'll talk to Tina, and if she hasn't chosen a winner, we'll try to get that done today. Um, because it's time. It's time. It's, you know, we're into May. It's, what, May 3rd? So, yep, it's time. Uh, so anyway, until next time, do please take care of yourself. And I'll see you Wednesday. Bye.